Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyya al-ameen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi azma'in Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri Wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla Wa anta taj'alul huzna iza shi'ta sahla Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Ameen ya rabbal alameen Dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, today uh, I'll talk on uh, Sharia audit of uh, Islamic financial institution. So where uh, I'll talk about what is the Sharia audit is all about and what is uh, what are the procedures and steps to conduct Sharia audit and what are the uh, audit results and what are the important uh, elements so for the uh, Sharia auditors. So this is the definition of Sharia audit. Uh, so Sharia audit is an examination and investigation of the extent of an Islamic financial institution's compliance. So it is examining, investigating whether uh, an Islamic financial institution is complying with the Sharia and in all its activities. Uh, so what are those activities? So those activities can be summarized as the contracts and agreements. So whatsoever the contracts and agreements, um, the financial products, um, you know, in, uh, deposit products, in uh, financing products. So whatsoever the agreements and contracts, whether they are Sharia compliant or not, the policies uh, made by the uh, institution, the products, uh, the transactions uh, done means the physical transaction, the financial transactions, the memorandum and articles of association, that is the, the constitution of the corporation, uh, the rules and regulation on how it works, and the financial statements like the balance sheet, uh, the income statement, uh, and others and uh, circulars and reports the advertisement the, and the other reports so all these are the components of, of a sharia audit all these uh, things uh, are the concern of sharia audit so it is uh, in a word sharia audit is to comply uh, to is an examination a checking whether uh, Islamic financial institution is complying with the Sharia principles in all of its activities and those activities can be divided into these factors the, the contracts, financial statements, products, policies, transactions, memorandum of articles uh, of as uh, memorandum and articles of association and even the circulars, reports, advertisements, etc. So what is the focus of Sharia audit? Uh, unlike the Sharia reviews, uh, Sharia audit focuses attesting the true and fair value of the financial statements in accordance to the uh, Sharia principles and, require, uh, and requirements. So uh, uh, in, uh, from our fee, they have uh, two definitions, one or uh, two uh, different uh, elements. One is Sharia review, another one is the Sharia audit. So Sharia audit is generally understood as uh, examining the quantitative aspect uh, of, the, um, of the assessment. So they would uh, focus more on the balance sheet, on the transactions, uh, the reporting of the transactions and others. So they look more on the, the quantitative aspect, while the Sharia reviews, they most focus on the qualitative aspect of the of the business uh, of the operation of the financial institution it may include whether um, whether the the employees of the financial institutions they are following the sharia in their transactions in their uh, in their professional uh, behaviors whether um, uh, in terms of marketing for example whether they are following the sharia so sharia review is looking at the uh, qualitative aspect of the Sharia and is more comprehensive and covers every aspect, while the Sharia audit focusing on uh, on the financial statements or, or the, the quantitative aspect of the business. 
So this is the objective of a Sharia Wadid, which is uh, stated uh, in the uh, office uh, uh, of um, the objective of an audit of financial uh, statements is to enable the auditor to express an opinion as to whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with Sharia rules and principles the accounting standards of the accounting and auditing organization of Islamic uh, financial institutions and relevant national accounting standards and practices in the country in which the financial institution operates. So it means that uh, the objective of the Sharia audit is uh, first to, uh, to make sure that uh, the, all the financial transactions, they fulfill uh, the Sharia rules and principles, which are uh, the fatwa or resolution issued by the Sharia board, as well as also the accounting principles of AOFI or accounting and auditing organization of Islamic financial institutions, as well as the national accounting standards and practices. So, uh, in the case of like Malaysia, the fina Islamic financial institutions, they are required to to follow the national uh, accounting standard which is under MASB that Malaysian accounting standards and they also have uh, different uh, standards there for Islamic financial institution where MSB covers both conventional and Islamic financial institutions and they have some uh, different uh, standards for Islamic financial institutions so uh, Islamic financial institution should follow the, the local um, standards uh, as well as they need to follow uh, the, the accounting and audit, uh, uh, the AOFI or accounting and auditing organization of Islamic financial institution. So these are the three very important factor for uh, 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 an auditor in terms of his uh, code of conduct. Uh, as we know, the, uh, the audit has a great impact on the, the audit, um, on the Islamic financial institution and also different stakeholders of the financial institution. So first important factor is uh, they must, uh, they also have a huge responsibility. They have uh, an amana, uh, so they must follow the code of ethics for professional accountants. So and this accounting is, a, is not a new profession and in the conventional financial institution it has been very long and they already have uh, a standard for uh, they, have, they have developed which is, uh, called, um, which is uh, issued by the International Federation of Accountants as well as AOFI also has developed a code of conduct for the Sharia auditors uh, so that uh, they need to learn and they need to follow that uh, so uh, the mo the two important factor for the auditor is they must have competence and they have due care. The competence is they must have the expert, the Sharia auditors. They must know the Sharia contracts. What is the, uh, what is Sharia? What is the nature of the Sharia contracts? What are the uh, situation that may uh, uh, that may lead to a contract uh, void uh, or. Um, or nullified uh, or defected in the Sharia or what are the situations which are uh, allowed in the Sharia so they must have not a knowledge on that and they also have due care means they must uh, put effort uh, and they must uh, do their best uh, to know uh, to examine uh, uh, all the possible violations uh, of the sh uh, Sharia in in that financial institution so, uh, <coughs> so number three comes from number two, which is understanding the pertinent Sharia principles. So in order to have competence, the Sharia uh, auditors must have uh, knowledge on the uh, uh, understanding of the Sharia principle. Well, it is one of the challenges uh, in Sharia audit to find Sharia auditors as uh, many conventional auditors, they find it difficult to understand the, the nature of the Sharia contracts. Uh, and uh, we have very few uh, Sharia auditors. However, uh, the, uh, still uh, those who are conventional auditors, they must go through some 
process in order to properly understand that the nature of the Sharia contract, the nature of Musharaka business or Mudaraba business, and in what cases those contracts can be void, the nature of Ijara, for example, or the nature of Mudaraba, uh, or the nature of uh, Murabaha, the conditions of those contracts, they should be uh, familiar on that. The functions of the auditor. So what uh, the auditor does uh, in a financial institution is actually to conduct the audit in accordance to the standards and requirements. So follow the standards, local and international uh, standards, as well as what is required to audit uh, based on the uh, in letter of engagement and understand and assess the adequacy of the uh, accounting system. So we need to understand and also the assess uh, whether the, uh, uh, the accounting system, I mean the, uh, the in accounting system of the institution, whether it, 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 is, uh, it is adequate, it is proper, and to understand that the system uh, and to obtain reliable evidence for a conclusion. So try to get uh, opt, uh, in, uh, evidence of any violation or any error. Uh, so of course, uh, auditors, they come with uh, evidence to show this claim. Determine the nature of audit procedures. So they have to plan uh, the audit procedures, the days and the time and what are the, uh, uh, what are the elements that they are going to uh, uh, examine and then expectation of uh, misstatements and errors so as an auditor they should not always expect that there will be everything will be always right but they should expect there is uh, any kind of misstatements and errors so auditor is a kind of job that's actually uh, where experience is very important where uh, people, those who are experienced auditors, they have gone through many uh, cases and they have understanding even from the, the nature of the uh, transactions, they can uh, sometimes expect uh, or they can predict uh, any uh, kind of mis uh, statements or errors from just examining a uh, few or documents or few transactions. And provide for sampling error and level of confidence. So, when any uh, error or misstatement is found, the evidence is found. So, the auditor should uh, tell what is his level of confidence to take his decision, and also whether there is any sampling error. Means, as you know, the auditor will work based on sampling. They cannot, or it's not possible for them to uh, to examine all. Rather, they will do sampling. And of course, there is an error because of the sampling. So they may can state what is the how the probability of the error and also his level of confidence. So this is the line, uh, timeline of Sharia audit. So at the first stage for Sharia audit, there is a point of engagement. Uh, the the top management uh, they will have an agreement. They will have an uh, engagement letter with the Sharia auditors. Uh, so where they will uh, put all the conditions, the outcomes, what is expected from the auditors. And after the point, uh, the engagement, the auditor will start to identify the process and procedures of the internal control system. They will uh, check, uh, they will uh, examine the internal control system of that financial institution. And then they will st uh, specific start to do sampling and testing for Sharia compliance. Uh, as I said before, um, it is not possible for the Sharia auditors to, to examine all the financial institutions. Uh, if possible, that is fine, but usually they will do sampling. They will uh, try to make uh, the sampling, uh, the, the most suitable uh, sampling uh, method that will cover that will give them more, the highest confidence and after uh, the sampling they will do the test they will examine based on the sampling and after they got the result they will summarize and prepare the report for the discussion with the board of the directors so they will uh, before they publish their uh, audit report they will have a discussion with the board of the directors 
Now, uh, after you understood uh, the wadid, how it works, uh, how it uh, takes place, uh, there is a very important element uh, in audit, which is the developing the audit rating systems. Uh, while um, the auditors at the end of audit, they will give some rating. And also when they are uh, auditing uh, uh, a financial institution, especially if uh, the external auditors, they will also check their internal control uh, and also their in, uh, internal audit system and also the external auditor may give a rating uh, on uh, on their internal control system. Uh, so here, um, uh, in order to talk about uh, the audit rating, we need to go back to the the, uh, the organization that is uh, developing these uh, standards and also helping uh, this uh, the auditors uh, and also the internal control system. So the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Tradeway Commission, so which is helps the auditors to assess the control, internal control system. Uh, so according to them, they define the internal control of, uh, of a financial institution or any corporation. As in the modern day, the internal control is quite important. Uh, in and it is also uh, part uh, of the concern of the audit. So internal control is a process effected by an entity's board of directors, management, and other personnel designed to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of objectives uh, in the following categories. So internal control is it starts with the board of the directors and their willingness and their uh, 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 and their um, willingness to put the, the procedures and also the practices and policies. Uh, so, uh, so what are these objectives? The first is effectiveness and efficiency of operations. So internal control, the objective of the internal control is to make sure that uh, the corporation is effective. There is no uh, misuse of the property, there is no uh, violation of the Sharia, uh, and also it is efficient uh, that it is uh, it can maximize uh, the the profit uh, for the shareholders with the less amount of assets. At the same time, um, uh, there are there is no uh, mismanagement or there is no uh, wastage of the assets. And then reliability of the financial reporting, that how the financial reporting is reliable in terms of the quality of the, the, the financial reporting. Uh, and then uh, compliance with applicable laws and regulations. As uh, we know that uh, many companies uh, in the past, they have to pay a very big compensation because of the violation of laws and regulation. And also because uh, of some corruption uh, done by the employees. Uh, so uh, uh, the one of the objective uh, and uh, the final objective of the, uh, the internal control system is that the, to ensure that the financial uh, the institution is complying with the applicable laws and regulations. There is no violation uh, in terms of the, the the behavior of the employees in terms of any financial transaction that violates any uh, laws and regulation. So, um, according to that uh, COSO, there are five components of internal control. So, in order to develop a proper internal control, uh, we uh, need to look at the five important factors in a company. First is the control environment. So, if a company, it has a very, uh, the environment is where there is a control, uh, check and balance everywhere, starting from the, the board of the directors, they put some practices that make sure there is a check and balance of the employees means that uh, the top management they can monitor the uh, uh, the employees and then uh, there is proper reporting so it is about the the environment of the control and there is proper risk assessment that there is a uh, certain uh, section in that company that uh, in that corporation that will assess the the possible uh, violation that may happen or the corruption. So even like in the case of universities, they also have uh, quality assurance. They also have 
uh, uh, department that can check is there any uh, possible ways of uh, misconduct or, or any violations and the control activities that what are the control activities the company has in terms of um, um, uh, monitoring uh, the account officer in terms of monitor, uh, re monitoring and reporting of the, all the transactions uh, uh, and so on. Information and communication uh, in, uh, is also very important uh, where there is a proper uh, uh, communication between the different sectors of the, of the corporation, co proper communication between the top management, the board of the directors with the, man, uh, with the management. So when there is a proper communication, everybody knows what is going on. So that will lead to uh, a higher internal control. And finally, is a monitoring. So everyone should be monitored. Uh, so if there is a, a good monitoring system in that company, then it has a very good uh, internal control. So all the kind of financial transactions, the, all the even the marketing officer, the agents, all uh, should be monitored. They should have yeah, a check on and balance of their uh, of their power and as well as their activities. So here, the the um, uh, from compliance culture to the risk management approach. So the the COSO they recommend to move to risk management approach. So risk management approach is is a risk uh, is a way to assess examine. Uh, the possible violation or the possible non-compliance is an approach uh, to to stop uh, the to, to stop the matter before it happens. So that is the risk management approach to the compliance approach. Compliance approach was uh, in the past where they just focus on the uh, on the compliance to follow the rules. While the risk management approach is that is the uh, approach is taken before uh, any. Uh, non-compliance happens. So based on the, the criteria discussed ab above, so uh, in order to check the internal control, uh, how strong uh, the internal control of a financial institution, uh, we need to check the effectiveness of the audit program. So usually the external auditors, they will see that what is the effectiveness of the internal audit of that financial institution and also the effectiveness of the board of um, uh, board and audit committee whether uh, the audit committee they do have good uh, communication with the they do communicate with the auditors they solve their problem and as well as they have some kind of procedures uh, in order to uh, stop and um, uh, any kind of undue influence on the auditors and then they also check on the audit management and process so how the audit is managed and the, the, the processes, whether they are independent and how frequently the audit is done uh, and uh, what are the important, uh, um, what is the coverage of the audit and also the audit reporting, whether the audit is properly reported to the audit committee uh, and also uh, whether any action taken based on the, the audit uh, the rep uh, after the reporting of the audit. And also it is uh, important how many the audit staff uh, the company has. If the company has very few number of audits, so they can just uh, examine uh, a very few number of contracts. So the sampling will be very small. So if there is uh, enough staff that actually shows that the company uh, has uh, sufficient staff to do the audit. audit. Uh, if uh, there is uh, not enough staff, so uh, the quality of the audit will be low. So based on these uh, uh, five important factors, uh, the external can, uh, auditor can give a rank of strong, satisfactory, or weak to any uh, financial institution's internal audit program. So if an institution that has a board of the directors that has a, a strong, that is a, which, cons, uh, which uh, takes uh, the audit uh, mechanism into consideration and they have a good uh, communication with the auditors and they put into practice certain procedures and they have enough uh, staff um, and they have uh, 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 proper management of the audit and reporting. So this is uh, that uh, institution can be 
uh, ranked as a strong. But if they are lacking on the um, staff or in terms of the mo proper monitoring, they may be satisfactory. And if uh, the level of the, the, the communication with the board of the director is poor, if they have very few number, or very uh, small number of staffs, and uh, they are, and if they are monitoring, uh, and also the the audit management and reporting is not uh, done properly, so that can be called a weak uh, audit program. Now uh, that is about the the rating of the the institutions overall rating in terms of its audit program. Now, when the auditor uh, done, uh, uh, has done his audit, he will usually uh, will come out with uh, four types of opinions. And of course, this is not only in case of uh, Sharia audit, even in the conventional audit, uh, uh, usually the auditor will come out with uh, either these four types of opinions in order to um, give the audit result. So once uh, the auditor um, has uh, done its audit, it will come out with either this four. One is the unqualified opinion, which is the, the best opinion, means uh, that opinion uh, will tell us that everything uh, is fine, there is no disagreement, the Sharia rules and principles uh, determined by the Sharia board and finance, and also the uh, they are all okay, and the financial reporting also following the standards. However, if there is any uh, disagreement between the auditor uh, with, the, with the management, that the auditor thinks that uh, something is not right, uh, there, is, uh, there may be, uh, is a, um, uh, there may be a, a violation. However, that violation uh, or that uh, disagreement is, is quite very small. It's not par pervasive, means it's not that big enough so the auditor will give a uh, qualified opinion. And then uh, the disclaimer opinion is given when uh, there is a, you know, a disagreement or there is a limitation, shortcoming uh, and the, um, in the, uh, that the auditor found and it is material and it is pervasive, mean it is a big enough. Uh, and however, uh, in that ca case, the auditor uh, does not have uh, sufficient evidence. So the, the auditor does not agree uh, or the uh, auditor found some kind of shortcomings uh, in the financial transaction how, uh, and he, uh, he has it. Uh, and uh, that kind of shortcoming uh, or disagreement is something big but the auditor does not have enough or sufficient evidence to, to prove that. So at that point, he will give a disclaimer opinion. And the finally, the worst one is the adverse opinion. Adverse opinion is when there is a disagreement with the auditor, with the management, and, uh, and, that, uh, and, and they have found because, uh, and that disagreement is because there is a, a material and pervasive um, uh, uh, disagreement or shortcoming or limitation or the violation uh, which is quite big and it is a material and the auditor has the evidence to, to prove that. Uh, the, that the qualification is that to and adverse opinion is, uh, is the worst one and if the adverse opinion is given so that really uh, will have a huge bad impact on the financial institution. Uh, recently, we can uh, we can uh, learn one of the company. Of course, uh, uh, it was um, it was a, uh, one of the listed company like Sarva Dynamic, which was uh, listed in Bursa Malaysia, and uh, their share price went down uh, rapidly because the, of the auditor gave a disclaimer opinion. So, uh, what is uh, the impact of the findings? So, so if uh, the auditor gives one of these uh, four, so what will be the impact? So, it has a huge impact, as we can see uh, just recently with the case of Sarba Dynamic, that uh, uh, the company is almost uh, nearly going to bank be bankrupt. 
uh, is because of the, the, the auditor gave a disclaimer opinion. So in any cases, uh, for Islamic financial institutions, the, uh, also for the, the share price will go down. Uh, people, the shareholders, they will uh, take their money out because uh, they also want their money is invested in a Sharia compliant way. And secondly, the, uh, the depositors also withdraw their deposits because uh, the depositors want a Sharia compliant return uh, profit. Uh, but if there is a violation, uh, of course, the depositors will lose com confidence and they will just withdraw their deposit because they want Sharia compliant profit. So uh, that is all about uh, Sharia audit. So um, I have already discussed what is uh, Sharia audit uh, and how what are the functions of the Sharia audit and uh, the how is the uh, audit uh, rating is uh, made. So with that, I, I thank you. And if you have any question, uh, you can write uh, in the uh, in the comment section. Uh, uh, below in the YouTube or you can uh, email me or, or text me through Telegram. So with that, I thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.